Hello, good people. How are you doing today? Back for another session, another episode. Well, continuing on with uh, Ancient Egypt, <coughs> Professor Breyer, I think his name is, <coughs> excuse me, a little under the weather, but we're going to continue. The professor was talking about the Joseph story, how the story of Joseph in the Bible is related to stories of ancient Egypt. There's no hard proof you know, no physical, tangible proof that, you know, this story was true, that the Bible story was true. But he's saying that some of the stories that were told in Egypt kind of match up with the stories that were told in the Bible. And that if you look at both stories side to side, side by side, it makes sense. They kind of overlap each other. So, today, we're going to talk about, I believe he is the 18th dynasty. So, that being said, let's get into it. So, he just said that in this dynasty, that there is a high regard for women. I don't think y'all understand what I'm saying. There is a high regard for women, especially, especially black women, Negro women. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to have to put that out, put this out there. The title of this channel is called Dark Knight. Similar to Batman, he's not the hero you want, but he's the hero you need. So, I, a lot of my truth is not meant to make you feel good in the sense that, you know, it don't trample on your feelings. That's the thing about the absolute truth. The universal truth is what I call it. A universal truth is going to be true no matter who says it, no matter what you think, no matter how you feel. It, it is what it is. The sky is blue. Space is black. I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, in saying that, I'm saying black women in Egypt, in ancient Egypt especially, were held 
in high regard. Some black women were even queens. Queens. Whether whether the uh, the king left left the kingdom to them or because they married into it, either way, they were queens and nobody had a problem with this. Well, of course, you're always going to have somebody who feel like, oh, they can do a better job, but who cares about those? What I'm saying is, it it bothers me sometimes when black women, especially not not just black women, but black women especially, you 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 act like sheep. You know, somebody jump up and say, "Well, you can't do this, and you can't do this, you can't do that." Unless you get this, that, and the third. So you go through this, you go through that. You leave your black men alone. You get with men from other cultures. And what? For what? Oh, I can't ever find no good men. No, I don't think that's true. You're just not looking. Because a lot of times you all have this so-called type. Oh, well, you know, he's a nice guy, but he's not my type. If you keep getting your feelings trampled over, if you keep getting hurt, then evidently, boo-boo, that guy is not for you. So you need to change your type. And in order to change your type, you have to change the way you think about yourself. It all ties in with what I just said about being a, a sheep, being a follower. We're talking about ancient Egypt where women were not followers. Women rose up to be leaders. They led. They didn't follow nobody else. They didn't go spend four years in college getting a degree so they can go work for somebody else. Really? Really? You got a, a few women, a few, that actually, you know, go out, get their paper, then graduate college and start their own business and successful at it. So, kudos to you. But, as a society, as a community of black people, we have done so much for society. We have done so much for the world that if you're going to waste your time going to college, getting a four-year degree, getting your bachelor's, your, your, your master's or whatever, You should be able to start your own business. Where is your Fortune 500 business? I'm not talking about little small business. I'm talking about big time business. You're descended from queens and kings. You're descended even more recent. You're descended from innovative people in the United States alone. Our black history is full of men and women who who held it down and did what they had to do despite segregation, despite slavery. They, they refused to be stopped. And they didn't even have degrees. All they had was basic schooling. So I'm just putting it out there. Black women, you all deserve better than what you get. You really do. But at the same time, don't don't write off all black men. Because there's still a lot of good men left. You just you just have to look. You have to change your mindset. Cast your net a little wider. 
You know, that good man might not be a drinker. It might not be in the club. Okay? And this thing about dating down, I've kind of heard that, you know, here and there. Well, you know, I got to have me a man that make just as much money as, as I do or more. Okay, cool. But at the same time, if that role was reversed, how you think men feel when they have to date a woman who don't make as much money as they do, but she look good. They call that arm candy. You're ornamental, as it was said. Not functional. You know, we pass you off on at these uh, functions. You know, look at my girlfriend. Look at my wife. But how much does that man really respect you? You don't make as much money as him. So... I threw that in there because a lot of women feel that uh, uh, they got to have somebody in order for them to get married, in order for them to feel loved, this man has to bring his checkbook. But then when the roles is reversed and the man start acting the ass and saying, oh, well, you know, she looked good, you know, she... A woman is not is not a piece of clothing, you know. You go out and get the new Jordans, and oh, by the way, let me get that uh, let me get the short hair girl over there. No, they don't sell women like that. You can't just rip one off the roll. So, that's my little rant. I do, that's just. <laughs> They kind of bothered me because I've been hearing stuff on the internet lately and it's just, especially since it's close, so close to Black History Month, which I really don't believe anymore. I, I saw an interview with, uh, who was it? Somebody was interviewing Morgan Freeman and he said something about doing away with Black History Month. And I did a little a little research, didn't get full into it. But yeah, Black History Month wasn't always Black History Month. It was Black History Day and Black History Week. And I say that to say, why are we allowing other cultures to di dictate and determine what we believe about ourselves? I don't agree with that. I really don't agree with that. So we as a people need to come together and build ourselves up, build our community up, and we set the standard for what we accept and what we don't accept instead of letting other people control the narrative. That was just, just my little rant for today. Meanwhile, let's get back to, to the discussion. stay with us for quite a while as they begin burial in the Valley of the Kings. We'll also have a chance to look at Thebes being really established as the capital of Egypt. There'll really be two capitals, Memphis in the north and Thebes in the south as a religious capital, but Thebes really gets established during this time. And we'll have a little time to look at what's it like to be a military man in ancient Egypt. So those are the four things we'll try to do. And 